You know I gotta come back Gotta come back Flat Basketball is back with the upcoming CEBL Summer Series. One of the first sports leagues in Canada to reopen for play. Canadian basketball has evolved so much in the last 20 years. Everyone is doing their part to grow this game in this country and it's just it's very refreshing to see what you guys have been able to do so i commend you for that mike canadian uh, talent in basketball is like an iceberg we we noticed the guys at the top the nba guys but just below that water level are hundreds if not thousands of players that are equally as talented that are you know a, a player two away from getting an opportunity so we have to celebrate that Joining me now, we have Executive Vice President, Strategy and Communications with the CEBL, John Lashway. How is it going? Great, Shelby. You know, I think people are going to be surprised that in this league provides people an opportunity to see those great Canadian players. And, and some of our guys have played in the NBA, and some of our guys will play in the NBA. So uh, it's really a, a tremendous uh, uh, collection of, of basketball talent that people will get to see on, on TV. For the past two seasons, I've been playing with Raptors 905. Also, been playing for our senior men's national team, Team Canada. Just seeing everybody that's come before you, it kind of gives you inspiration. And you look at guys like Fred Van Fleet, Norman Powell, Pascal Siakam, guys who have been through the 905 program and have been successful now in the NBA. Um, just shows you the opportunities that the program provides for you. You know, I thank the Raptors 905, the G League, for giving me the opportunity. Team Canada always been there for me. And then now, you know, the summer series, I'm, I'm continuing to just kind of elevate my game and elevate my status and, you know, get back to that point where I used to be, where, you know, mentally, um, you know, I, I was where, who I thought I was. So now I'm just happy at that, that I get to do that. I think the Hamilton Honey Badgers is a great opportunity for me just in terms of my personal development and also with the high character guys that we have around it. It's tremendous for us to all be here. It's kind of like we're representing the G League, but also representing Canada at the same time. After going to school in the States where my family couldn't really see me play that much, um, all those things mixed together just made it just a beautiful thing. In the past two years, I've had a great time playing basketball. What are you uh, making of this Hamilton Honey Badgers roster? They look pretty damn daunting for any other team to come across. I think now that they have guys like Briante Weber and Dwayne Notice, uh, they can apply a lot more pressure on the ball. They have so many tools that it's going to be different guys every night. When I picked up a basketball, it's just a foregone conclusion that that's what I was going to end up doing. I haven't played serious basketball in Canada since maybe high school. It's been a while. That's what this summer has kind of uh, helped me do, is to sit down and, and spend some more time with family. Uh, times that maybe I've taken for granted before, I definitely haven't taken it for granted this summer. You know, I've, I've had a chance to do stuff with them and, and the other members of my family that I haven't been able to do in years. Just things like a simple barbecue, hanging out in the house, um, going golfing. COVID-19 has kind of forced us to stick by each other and kind of rekindle that family bond that I think we just kind of all took for granted a little bit. He's been a loving brother to me, a very helpful brother to me. To this day, I still take his advice on a lot of things. And now he's on the Niagara coaching staff during the CBL series. So uh, it's going to be fun to play against him as well. We'll see. With this tournament, it's so different though, right? Because it's so quick. We have a lot of fun together and that's, that's, that's my guy. So. It'll be nice, it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to competing against him, com looking forward to competing in Canada versus a lot of guys that I've either coached again or some of them played with or played against. So it's coming back full circle and I'm just happy to be a part of it. What'd you say? Huh? What's the what? <laughs> Story up, what? That's such a slice, <laughs> send that again. Ask him who won the last time we played one-on-one -on -one or the last times. Okay.
And I'll ask him who's the overall one-on-one -on -one winner. <laughs> what overall. are we talking about here? Overall. Since I turned 15 and we've been playing one-on-one. -on -one. Wow. Overall. He just says this because on camera right now, I'm overweight. I have my COVID weight on. I had surgery last year. So he's trying to take advantage of the appearances of my body into making people believe that he's something. I'm the champ. I'm the champ. And three people in this world know the truth. Willie, myself, and the Lord. He doesn't know this. I'll never say this to his face because he's an idiot. But there's nothing I'm more proud of in my life in terms of being able to see my brother now entering almost his seventh season as a professional basketball player. And for me, who's played four years, to see him go even further and to continue to make this a career. And now I'm coaching and just, we're really proud of it. I'm really proud of him. Like this summer has been the best summer I've had in a long time simply because he's around. All right, brother. They are the champions. Is that right? Is that right? <laughs> Until one of us comes through. Yeah. All right. I'll we'll see you later. Yes, sir. This is a good chance for us to all reconnect and also compete against each other and push each other and get the best out of each other. This is really good for Canadian basketball. Well, and I think the one thing that we haven't talked about yet as well is, I mean, these are guys that had a seven to eight day training camp. They haven't played at game level speed for months now. Let's build on what we did yesterday. Let's have a good one. Let's go to work. Go, let's go, let's go, let's go. John, for now, you're going to go to the other slot. Everybody else fill in the lines. Heaven, Anthony, two men. Good job, Hope. Good. Go. Okay, so we got a wing in. We're seeing more patience. Three slot in the corner. Fingers on three, family on six. One, two, three, stay here. Four, five, six. Get on three, fellas. One, two, three, together. Family on three. One, two, three. Family. You know, all of us, really, the planning that's gone into this is, is really coming to fruition. This is a made-for-TV event, uh, but it's, it's also during a pandemic, and so you're balancing the two, wanting to make sure we get as much as we can in a very creative way for television. And in the same breath, we also want to make sure that everybody's safe. So we're social distancing, our broadcast crew will be separated a little bit. There'll be some learning for everybody, but we've certainly tried to take as many considerations as possible to make sure that there is still that vibe of a CEBL game and the excitement that comes with it. But at the same point in time, we're trying to protect everybody. So 1.30 CBC goes, uh, goes live from the mothership. 99.3% of all Canadians have an opportunity to watch us. That's, that's CBC television on the main network. So we'll have media here. They will need to be escorted by somebody along the path to behind the curtain into the, into the magic area. What I'd like to do is before every game, a member of the team comes to us to just quickly go through the media protocol just for the first few days so that, you know, uh, if this, things go wrong and you don't know what's going on, you exactly know what the protocol is post-game. My mentor, John Lashway, who's the president of the, the Hamilton franchise, we've had discussions about, you know, this reminds us of when he came to Canada and, and start, helped start the Raptors and building that broadcast brand. How we broadcast and an opportunity of being the first in Canada uh, to, to return from the pandemic to be able to play sports for a sports hungry Canadian audience and to be able to showcase Canadians uh, who have been playing throughout the world uh, on an international stage now coming home. So it's, it's, it's extra pressure for us because we're going to have eyes that we didn't have in our first year as a CEBL. Uh, but we're, it's, it's an opportunity for us, I think, to, to just skyrocket in terms of being on the same page as other major sports leagues in the country. The following is a live presentation of CBC Sports. Professional sport makes its return on Canadian soil and it's the Canadian Elite Basketball League leading the way. It's going to be a thrilling two-week summer series. Who will raise the championship trophy in 2020? We get things started with a doubleheader right here on CBC Sports.
So first game of the 2020 Summer Series, two teams that know each other very well, Hamilton and Niagara. We are underway. Here's Mullings, and we get our first points of the contest as he drove right to the rack. Deep three there from Robertson. Okama comes right back and hits it from downtown. Harrison trying to get it to Kennedy, and here's Guy Bucard. Throw down with no problems. Notice, lost the handle on it, got it back again. Shot clock violation of Grandy Clays. <laughs> he screams out, he's happy with his team's defense in that sequence. Look at Weber. And then Klassen right there for the tip. And Weber just trash talking with Anderson up the court here. Here's Robertson, corner three, rattles it down, and Cassius Robertson is on fire. Weber, off-balance shot. Missed that one, loose ball, bodies go flying all over the place. Luatua gets it to Glaze, Glaze with a throwdown. Just a reminder, at the four-minute mark, we get the Elam ending. So the Elam ending is about target score. So right now, Niagara has 87. We add nine points to the 87. 96 becomes our target. If you score 96 or above that, you win the game. And Weber, that's a deep three. And he rattles it down. Klassen, he's open. And Klassen with a three. Shuffle it in the corner. Johnson, another three. Hamilton, you can't kill him. Here's Mullings, though, and Mullings ends the game. A valiant effort from Hamilton, but in the end, Niagara, they win this one in Elam. So here we go, second game of the CEBL Summer Series, and we're underway. This is the first game for the Ottawa Blackjacks in their history. New expansion team to the CEBL. Keep. Pass inside, and Law puts it away. Good V by Shaq Drive by Harlich, hooping on the arm, and the big man's gonna go to the line for 12. Back the other way, McCollum throws it down. Here's McKenzie, he rounds the corner, gets the layup, that was slick. Oh, great pass. Oh, look at the feet. Unbelievable passing by Ottawa. McCollum, little side adjustment. Oh, beautiful pass inside. Hoop in the heart. Well, yes, they got it going. Here's Anderson, bounce pass to Sharvis, to McKenzie, they get the bucket. And this 12 team, two points away from winning this contest. Here's McKenzie, this is in the tip by McCollum, and that's it. The 12th Nighthawks, they win this game as they beat the Ottawa Blackjacks. Hey, let the excitement be the fact that we just got to play a basketball game. That's it, right? That's it. When this team was assembled and we got out here and started training camp, everybody has been underestimating you guys. They have written you guys off. They've written me off. They've written this team off. Nobody expects you guys to do shit. Okay? They don't. Okay? They're doubting you. They're doubting us. And when, when you get doubted, fellas, and somebody doubts you and your ability to do something, one of two things can happen, and you can choose what happens. You can prove them right, okay, or you can prove them wrong. Okay, day one here, fellas, we set the f***ing tone that we're proving all these motherfuckers wrong. Let's go to work. We are about to throw it up here. Game number three, we are underway from St. Catharines. From downtown, Cassius Robertson, you're gonna hear the name a lot today. Webster Chan, his third attempt of the game. Cash money from downtown, the man to call the king. First subs of the game, in comes Rashawn Brown at the point guard spot. From downtown, and Rashawn Brown telling his boys, let's get going. That's a U-sport making his first basket with a whole lot of confidence. 
Oh, another big take by Brown. Brown dancing on him. Rashawn Brown shouting out his voice. Holy <laughs> smokes, this guy is confident and hot. I get it, it's a back-to-back, -back. it's a morning game, but we gotta understand that like that was an embarrassing half defensively. Okay, go, go, let's go, defend. This is another thing for Sask. They haven't played game action like this. How are they gonna come out in this third quarter? How are the legs gonna be? Henson, Ultra, he hit a couple in the early going. Big Sam Brown back the other way. Nice drop off, Bracey Davis. You hear the river line screaming out, stop ball, it's not happening. Mullings back the other way. Tough take. Braden Baskets right now, but the Rattlers really in control of this one. Out come the Rattlers. They just need a bucket. It's back out. Osei from downtown. Kemi Osei sends the River Lions home. The Rattlers pick up their first win of the CEBL Summer Series. We have a second game coming up here today, Joe. A battle of the West. Fraser Valley taking on the Edmonton Stingers. Two very strong teams. Fraser Valley may be the dark horse of this tournament. Wow. Nice look down low. Corte, no good, gets his own rebound, puts it right back up. He's a natural scorer in the paint. Achukamba checks in from the land beyond. Corner three, cash money, Kyle Johnson. Kyle Johnson. And check it into the game, Jahel Menega. Head coach Kyle Julius says that Menega is the best Canadian that people don't know about in the CEBL. And that is Xavier Moon, the flash flying up your screen there. That if you see a yellow blur at any point, that's Xavier Moon. Dugan, up top, wide open. Junior knocks him down. And I mean, Fraser Valley just shooting the leather off him right now. Hey, we're letting their bulls get in our we didn't know it was coming. It ain't even there. We always have to punch first. They came and they punched us first. I mean, now the whole, whole first half, we're just stumbling back. Yeah. Okay. Now watch they, watch they fake half time adjustments because they're yeah. fuck them. Guards, yeah. get to the open spot. Y'all get ready to shoot. Unless you spin, fucking leave, bro. The good thing about this, there's lots of time left. The bad part, I'm the only one standing out there talking shit and not backing down from them. I told you guys, I love the energy, man. I love the energy, but it's four quarters, right? It ain't, it ain't a two quarter game. When the f are we gonna grow up? When? All right, so let's lock, lock in. Okay, just lock in. Look, look. Execution. I told you right from the start. This is this shit. Nothing, nothing changes. Just, okay. We're playing men, guys. Are they not men? Are you not a man? Can you get up when you get punched? They just punched us. Or are you guys gonna punch back? That's what I wanna know. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Stay aggressive. One, two, three, stay. Together, one, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. Wing three. Yeah. Big time shot. It's open again. Kamba from downtown. The Stingers are back in the game. Up top, Forte. Taking it off the dribble. Quarter three. That is much needed. Kajukin. Kadugan feeling it right now. He wants everyone to know. Barrett Lassen has his bandits up off the bench. So target score is up, 111. We are now one bucket away for the bandits. Menega wide open for three. Shot ends Menega. Menega finishes the Frazier Valley Bandits. No, 113, I told you before the game, it's a motherfucking six round fight. All right, that's one round. You gotta stay in the fight. I did not have a confident substitution pattern. I did not know exactly who to sub when. I, we hadn't played a real game. We hadn't uh, really played together yet and I'd never been in an Elam situation before. Okay, I've never been in that before. So we all learned a lot. But the mission is the mission. There'll be different lineups that start. There'll be different guys that play longer, less, whatever the, whole, the case may be. But you guys did what we came to do today, and that was play quick. We had 100 points before Elam. This is how, and, and we didn't execute well. We executed in chunks, but not well. So now we got to take care of our bodies, and it's a six round fight. It's not like we're off till the next game. You're still in the fight right now. This is still part of the fight. 
Okay, the way you can't take care of your bodies, the way you think, the way we watch film, the way you eat, okay, that's part of the fight. It's gotta be top notch. It's our game. Y'all see how bad they is. They started complaining about fouls they wouldn't get in doing that. The only time they really tried to play against us was in the Eli game. Exactly. And what they said, fuck this, I'm finna get mine. Exactly. You don't get to go home to your family and chill and then come back to the next game. It's a marathon. Dudes, dudes can't really handle this at this level for six straight games, for 10 straight days. Dudes can't really do it. You're stronger, you're tougher, you play harder. Yeah. All right, here we go. All I want to say is, yo, just keep the positive energy, man. Yeah, positive man. energy, baby. Sure. Together. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Rob, I know my teammates. They're, they're doing what it takes for their body to feel good as well as far as getting treatment and some extra attention from the training staff. The rest was definitely there, but, you know, basketball players takes us just a little bit of time before we're, we're back into the groove of things. Good evening and welcome inside Meridian Center here in downtown St. Catharines, Ontario. We've got a pair of one-on-one -on -one teams squaring off tonight. Both Hamilton and Edmonton dropped their openers. Hamilton, they lost their opener. They then came back and beat Guelph on Monday. We've got to go out and punch first. All right, we saw what happens when we kind of play like, no, it's just like we're, we're going out from the jump, okay? So we hit and then we keep going. You know, everybody has spoke a lot about Brianna Weber, but I think this, Dwayne Norris is actually the key to this team's success. Absolutely, nine on the clock. Dwayne Notice for three. That's good, Dwayne Notice pull up triple. Jordan Baker, nice little finish with the left hand. Here's Notice looking for another triple. He cans it, his third triple of the half already for Dwayne Notice from Moon. And Notice has it, he's got a one-on-one -on -one with Peter McNeely, will he take it at him? He will. The blocking foul, they're gonna count it, and the foul for Dwayne Notice. And cutting further into that lead, 77-70 with a chance to make it 71. He has control of his body use it and uses his body to shield to get to the basket. Notice playing some outstanding basketball here up to 19 points in the game. Make that 20 points here for Dwayne Notice. Here's Notice driving. Tries to finish lefty and does. Tough finish, yeah. Dwayne Notice. No, but he can't be stopped. Here's Notice looking to take the lead. He slips there. Stumbles, he's holding his ankle. Don't like to see that as McNeely goes the other way. And we're gonna see time called here as Dwayne Notice is down. Holding that ankle, his left ankle. Not what you wanna see for a guy who's been incredible in this game, 23 points.
you know, you put blood, sweat, and tears into it, whether you've been through adversity or persevered through any type of, you know, difficult times, you want everybody to understand that you're to be respected and, you know, you're very serious about your craft. Again, I uh, wish all the best along with Javon and Amy to Duane Notice, the Canadian and Raptors 905 members. Hopefully that he's okay there and maybe we'll see him again in this tournament, maybe not. But either way, he gave us a show today with 23 points. Obviously, pretty tough news with Duane Notice going out there after playing so well all game long. You know, how did the, the Hamilton Honey Badgers react going forward? And if he's not able to play, who steps in? I am a product of change, I got the product and things Turning my health into gains, channel the pain Looking to better the days, yeah You are a product of fear and the men and the men You can't get away from them things And I am aware, fully prepared, the devil he speaks, yeah And this what he said, you gotta get paid Do what you gotta do, get to the bag Stay at your nine if I get on the avenue You ain't cut out for them things, yeah You are not good enough, you are the type of got people They shouldn't love anyone knowing you know that you phony You never cut out for this, you should just give it up, yeah well, that's how they want me to feel. I am the man of the steel, king of the hill, man of the year, finally feeling.